I am at Project Line today, right here in downtown Seattle. It's the Break Room Ballad. I am with Jacob Uwa. You are a manager here at Project Line. Yes, I am. And we actually worked together at Aqualon yes, way we did. back in the day. Way back in the so, day. So we're buddies, and it's really good to see you again, Jacob. You too. And thank you for setting this up because You're I am super interested in what Project Line does and how they are so active in the community. Can you give a, like, a little bit of an overview into what Project Line does? Yeah. So I've been here for about seven months now. Um, and in the process of being here, there's been so much that I could say that we do. But generally, in our core principles, we are a consulting type agency focused on staffing organizations, strategic team growth, and project based work of the many things that we do. You do some staffing too, as well, right? Yeah. And on the website, it says you are focused a lot in diversity and staffing with diversity in yeah. mind. Uh, what are some of the tactics that you use to go about ensuring that there are diverse staffing at some of these places around Seattle or nationwide? Yeah, so nationwide. Okay. Um, personally for me, so I have a foothold, I have a Microsoft team, we have foots in YMCA and Amazon and Google. But for my team at Microsoft, I literally have people almost in every state now. Um, and the way we sort of go about making sure that our practices are diversive and inclusive, um, we practice things like assessments. So we use a system called Burke, and what Burke does is it tells us what the character fit of this person is like going into this job. Um, and we can use Burke and the data that Burke has to help us figure out if this person will be successful in this job or if their natural characteristics fits the job and the timeline of the job. Um, so we use Burke a lot. I use Burke for everything. Um, we also use a system called Textio. Have you heard of Textio? I have not. I love Textio, I really do. Um, so Textio helps improve our job descriptions. So we can put a job description into Textio and it will help us make sure that our job descriptions are non-gender related. So it keeps everything neutral for us and it keeps us using the right words to attract the right people. And we also do a lot of blind resumes. Um, we, when we work with our clients, we don't want to tie somebody's experience to their name or you know, give an insight into anything that may have to do with that person. Because, I mean, we are human beings, we have natural human bias, and so mm -hmm. using the blind resume practice helps us strip some of that away. Do the organizations also have to do their portion of the Burke test so that the matching is the same for the same, I guess, system and process? Uh, yes and no. It depends on the organization. So, I mean, for my team at Microsoft, one of the ways that you know, I make sure that people are a fit for the team and the culture is we've had our key team members take the Burke assessment. So what I can now do as the manager is go in, send this Burke assessment out and measure it out to the key performers on our team to see if there is a fit culturally and character wise for these people. Um, sometimes we have clients who will take the assessment and the assessment will help us figure out people going into the role and if they will match or merge with who they're going to work with. So diversity for us, I mean, it's more than the word itself. And it, it, for us, it's not just diversity, it's making sure that we have the diverse piece there and the inclusion piece there. We want to make sure that not only are we inviting everybody to the table, right. but we are inviting them to the dance floor and we're letting them know that, yes, we want you here and we want you to be included. Okay. Um, when I talk to my clients about diversity, I, I really have to know who I'm talking to because organizations in general typically care about one thing and that's bottom line. How can we make revenue? How can we drive revenue? How can we keep our employees here the longest? How can we make them happy? How can we make them engaged in what we're doing? Um, and that's where diversity comes into place. I mean, for us, it's informing our clients that diversity isn't just, you know, the different types of highs you have. It's getting collective geniuses together 
so you can get a range of people's ideas and experiences to help achieve the bottom line result. And that end goal for any company is revenue and its finances and it's how do we drive more money and that's what diversity naturally solves. That's great. Yeah. That was a great way to say that. <laughs> I have there. learned so much in my seven months of being here. It's crazy. And I keep learning more. And I can't tell you how excited I am to just be part of an organization that diversity and inclusion is really at our core value. It's not just a thing we go out and say, hey, you know, we practice this and that. That's not who we are. That's really what we practice. And I hope that the people who work for us or people who come to work for us will feel that. You know, we also drive things like the future of work, which to us means, you know, not limiting work to geographic locations. So some of the things that we work with, with our clients and informing them is, you know, if you have this consultant doing this type of work, they don't have to be geographically tied to one location, which means a number of things for those clients. Um, so I get the chance to educate and consult clients on what the future of work really looks like for us. There is a range of positions that we're hiring for, um, but generally we look for people in the marketing field, we look for people who have experience with events, um, we look for program managers, we look for copywriters. Um, I will say copywriting is a high for us. We're always looking for copywriters. Wow, okay. I am happy to be on board to talk to anyone. Um, I'm excited about what I do. I, for the past seven months of being here, every day that I wake up to go to work, I don't feel like I'm working because I love what I do. Um, and I want people to feel that way. And I feel like at Project Line, that's the environment that we foster. And so if people are out there looking for a place to work, looking for a place to feel at home and looking for a place to just be themselves, this is the place to do that. Well, thank you for your time, Jacob. I really appreciate it. Of course. It was good to see you. Great to see you too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Thank you. Good night. I was lucky enough to grow up in the country. I was lucky enough to put in Mrs. Fennell's driveway twice. I was lucky enough to get to know the language and learn the ins and outs of the country life. Sometimes the job is easy and you don't have to do it again. And other times the job is just rough. But as long as I keep working hard, meet new folks every day. I'll always be lucky enough She was lucky enough to be raised in a rainy city She was lucky enough to see the skyline grow she was lucky enough to miss the bus a few times and navigate the side streets better than anyone could know. Sometimes you know your destination in every hole along the way, and other times you can't find a road to trust. But as long as she keeps working hard and meets new folks every day, she'll We were lucky enough to meet one tired evening We were lucky enough to be both thinking of home We were lucky enough to notice the paths we were taking And know exactly where to lay the stone Some things are only obvious when you notice every angle but alone we never have that much luck as long as we keep working hard and meet new folks every day we'll always be lucky enough nice. 
She was lucky enough to be raised in a rainy city She was lucky enough to see the skyline grow She was lucky enough 